Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site, bettingangle.us, a free site. It is February the 10th, 2024. Let's talk about Hamza Shiraz's destruction of Liam Williams, and let's talk about challenges he's going to face. But first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now let me just say, the fight is in my favorites folder here on YouTube. It's a must watch. Shiraz looks so good in the fight. He has such a good stiff jab. He has size, he has timing. He can throw other punches off the jab. One of the knockdowns is an uppercut, right? He has presence. His opponents look overwhelmed. His jab's so good, like with other guys with great jabs, Larry Holmes, for example. The fight doesn't start until an opponent can show that he can get past the jab. Here, Liam Williams never does, right? He's hit with the jab. He doesn't know what to do. Um, Shiraz looks smooth. You can tell the punches are hurting because Williams, who is a cagey vet, who is a guy who survived multiple knockdowns against Chris Eubank and went the distance with Eubank, right? Williams is a guy who has a stout chin, usually. Here, He's wincing, and folks, all of this is taking place in the first round. Williams gets dropped multiple times in the first round. Understand how the fight ends. A guy in Williams' corner shows some mercy and waves the towel. Right? Shiraz barely breaks a sweat. Understand, too, why people are excited about Shiraz. He has one of boxing's best jabs. Folks, it's a power jab. He can knock you out with it. Right? I need for people to go back and look at film. Frank Warren, his promoter, mentioned the name of Thomas the Hitman Hearns, one of my favorite all-time fighters. Right? Let's go further. Carlos Monzon, one of the guys on Mount Rushmore of middleweights, had the same kind of very stiff jab that could knock out an opponent. Just understand the problem Shiraz is going to have, and he's 6'3", fighting at 160. The problem he's going to have are old-timers, like Frank Warren, like a YouTuber like me, who are going to look at him, who understand we're seeing something special here. This isn't your typical blue chip prospect. The guy has the great jab. He has the power. He's a knockout puncher. Right? The guy has the size. He has ring coverage. In other words, he can, like Deontay Wilder, knock you out with straight, long punches. He's only 24 years old. There's room to grow. So we're going to saddle this guy with our dreams, with our expectations. Understand, it's a big burden. It is a huge burden when people are comparing you to Thomas the Hitman Hearns. Right? Understand, too. I believe, just based on fight styles, that Shiraz has one of boxing's best chances to beat Saul Alvarez. And the reason I say that is based on styles, right? Canelo doesn't move that well. 
there was a period of time where Canelo had a knee brace. Look at his fight against Rocky Fielding, right? Canelo's not a guy who runs across the ring at you anymore. The other thing, too, is the height gap, right? 5'8", we'll give Canelo the half inch here. 5'8", against 6'3". That's a 7 inch gap. Understand, too, Shiraz, even if Canelo fights low, right? Shiraz has age on his side. It's 24 against 33. Let me say, too, there have been some fighters in history. The fight style that would give Shiraz problems would be, let's say, a Mike Tyson fight style. Prime Tyson. Right? Where Tyson could duck under your height, your guard, get inside with very hard shots. Right? But understand, that's a young man style. That's not a style that a 33-year-old can do for 12 rounds, right? Canelo, who has faded a little bit in some fights, the Golovkin fight, the John Ryder fight, right? He, he wins those fights. I'm talking about the last Golovkin fight. Uh, he wins those fights, but you could tell that Canelo is pacing himself. I would argue that Canelo's been pacing himself for years. Go back to the Alfredo Angulo fight. Even the crowd figured out that Canelo was taking parts of rounds off. Right? The guys who can duck under an A-level jab, like Hamza Shiraz throws, have to be young and agile. In other words, the minute you see Shiraz fighting a righty, right? Because Shiraz's jab lines up better with righties than it would a lefty like Janabek. The minute you see Shiraz fighting a guy in his 30s who looks like he's a KG vet who's slowing down just a bit, you have to ask yourself, does this guy have the stamina to bob and weave like a young Joe Fraser, right? Let's remember, Joe Fraser fights Ali the first time in his 20s, right? Does the guy have the energy level to bob and weave to deal with this level of jab? Or does the guy have the very fast feet and you have to be blessed with great foot speed? Think Manny Pacquiao to time an entry point. And as Shiraz pulls back the jab, has the foot speed to duck and run in to throw punches that would have to be meaningful. So let's talk about Thomas Hearns here. Understand, Hearns is that rare fighter. You know, I believe boxing's rock, paper, scissors. I can say this guy is great while at the same time saying as great as Sugar Ray Robinson was. He had a problem with Randy Turpin. Was lucky to stop him in the rematch. Right? Um, Floyd Mayweather, one of my favorite fighters, certainly on the very short list of the sport's best ever, right? Uh, spectacular defensively. But again, because of Styles, because Thomas the Hitman Hearns KO'd Roberto Duran early, Hitman is one of the few people who I believe would be able to beat Floyd. Right? Because of size, because of a jab, because of spacing, because of power that would make a guy pay if he slips the jab or if he ignores the other punches the jab setting up, right? Understand, Hearns was a rare talent. But let's talk about what happened. And if I'm Shiraz, I carefully research Thomas Hearns, right? Carefully. Hearns KOs Pimpino Cuevas, 
We all thought Cuevas had a granite champ. Well, that was until he ran into the hitman. Understand what a big figure Hearns became. He was called the hitman, the people of Detroit. I'm talking about civic leaders. Then started telling Thomas that the nickname portrayed the city poorly. I'm not making this up. So there's a brief moment in time where Thomas Hearns, the hitman, and he's more of a hitman than Ricky Hatton, right? This was a guy who finished opponents. Thomas Hearns started calling himself the Modi, the Motor City Cobra, right? Because he was so popular. He was such an ambassador for Detroit. He loved his city, right? He's fighting under Emmanuel Stewart of the Cronk Gym, right? He's with Emmanuel Stewart before Lennox Lewis is, before Vladimir Klitschko is, right? The Cronk Gym was the hot gym for a stretch in the 1980s. So understand what happened. Right, there was a bank fraud. Right, B boxing has had some edgy moments. Someone was embezzling from a bank, had millions of dollars as a result, decided to get into the boxing promotion business, offered the hitman a lot of money to fight future Hall of Famer Sugar Ray Leonard. Right now, hitman like Shiraz, was fearless. Right, you got the feeling Hitman back then would have fought Larry Holmes. Right, well understand, Ray Leonard was the wrong opponent for Hitman to fight. The fight is spectacular because it's probably the best fight of Ray Leonard's career. Right? Ray had to dig deep. The reason he had to dig deep is that Hitman was actually winning on the judges' scorecards. It's a great fight for Hitman because Ray Leonard comes in and hits Hitman in the body and hurts him. And that's the fear with Hamza Shiraz, right? He is very thin. When you're 6'3 and you're weighing 160, you're extremely thin, right? So was the Hitman. Ray Leonard jumps in, right? The reason Ray Leonard is able to jump in is because Ray Leonard had spectacular foot speed and timing, right? Ray Leonard also was a young man then. That's the kind of opponent who Thomas Hearns should not have been fighting at that moment in time. But because of the bank embezzlement and the way above market, purse that they were offering the fighters at the time we didn't know that the promoter got the money from embezzling from a bank right this was the kind of money guys couldn't turn down back then so of course you get to the 14th round now understand Ray Leonard when he ended his career had a better than 60 percent KO ratio in other words Ray is completely the wrong guy for Thomas Hearns to have fought at that time. In a fight, Hearns is winning, and it's the 14th round because this is the early 80s, folks. This is not 12 Roundville, uh, which boxing instituted later. Ray is able to get Hearns to fall between the ropes, right? Ray is able to stop Thomas Hearns. It's a great fight for both. Hearns, who mirrored Hamza Shiraz in terms of great jab, great right hand, could throw hooks off the jab, could throw uppercuts, right? Thomas Hearn suffered his first loss against Ray. Let me point out that after Ray hits him in the ribs, hurts Hearns to the body, Hearns does something we didn't know he could do. He gets up on his toes and he starts dancing. He also shows you that that great jab that he had was a mobile jab. He could turn it into a mobile jab. Right? Being an OG, 
let me pivot here and offer some more advice to Shiraz. Because this guy, the sky's the limit, folks. Right? You're going to have a lot of people coming up to him and giving him advice. Because they understand this is that guy who can actually take advantage of the advice. So right now, in the UK, you have a guy who is right around the top of the game. We'll find out if he's at the top of the game when he fights in his unification match against Usyk. And that's Tyson Fury. Right? Fury is tall for a heavyweight. So he can talk to tall Shiraz who's tall for a middleweight. Fury has a great jab, right? I know we haven't seen it in some recent fights, right? That Ngannou fight, we're all wondering where that jab went. But Fury has a great jab. But understand, Fury is older than 24. He has taken it to the next level. Fury's jab is a mobile jab. Fury also, and this takes years, Fury also is ambidextrous to the point where, as a southpaw, Fury can dance. Now understand, Shiraz, just on the game he has now, which is prodigious, can take out many of the people around him. Right? This is a guy with a championship level game as it is. My recommendation to Shiraz, because of his talent, his height, his advantages, which Fury has many of, right? Fury's not the puncher Shiraz is. Understand, Shiraz has an edge in some areas. But if I'm him, I think about how to make my jab more mobile. So if I happen down the road to be in the ring with a Sugar Ray Leonard type, who jumps in the pocket and hurts me to the body. I have the legs working and Shiraz is light on his feet. It looks like he's even better coordinated than he shows us. I believe he can pull this off. If I'm Shiraz, I figure out how to make my jab more of a mobile jab. He didn't have to show a mobile jab to beat Liam Williams. In essence, I want Shiraz to really be fighting against himself. In other words, to set the standard so high for himself that he's improving his game that doesn't need improvement to fight at a world-class level. Right? I would be studying. I would be studying Tyson Fury. You know, Tyson Fury actually has a Kronk Gym guy who helps him prepare for fights, Andy Lee. I'd be talking to Andy Lee about Thomas the Hitman Hearns, right? I would try to imitate those guys. I would even go further. I would look at Larry Holmes, one of the best I've seen ever at heavyweight. Understand, Holmes had the stiff jab. It was stiff and Holmes was mobile. He could dance. Right now, all I'm saying is work on the mobility in the background. Continue your career, but keep lifting your game because your potential could get you to the Hall of Fame. Now, let's talk about the mistakes Thomas Hearns made. Right? Understand, it's just sequencing. Hearns had as much talent as anyone in the 1980s. But Ray Leonard had been around more than Thomas Hearns when they fought. Ray Leonard had already fought Wilfredo Benitez, right? A guy who would beat Roberto Duran, right? Ray had, you know, made the Olympic team, was an Olympic gold medalist. Um, Ray was in a more advanced place in his career than was Thomas the Hitman Hearns. Hearns shouldn't have taken that Ray Leonard fight when he did. 
right? In other words, I'm not saying avoid Ray Leonard. No, no, Hearns wasn't going to avoid anyone. This is a guy who fought Ray Leonard, who fought Duran, who fought Marvin Hagler, right? Hearns is fighting the biggest guys. Understand, when Tommy Hearns goes up to light heavyweight, right, he wins the title there. And Hearns, of course, starts out at welterweight. When he makes it to light heavyweight, he fights a Hall of Famer, Virgil Hill, right? He fights Dennis Andres. In other words, Hearns is fearless. He fights around Barkley twice, lost twice to Barkley, but fought Barkley twice. Barkley was a bad man in the 1980s, right? So understand, Hearns isn't afraid. I'm not saying be one of these guys who doesn't fight the big names. All I'm saying is, Figure out who you're ready to fight in the moment. Fighting Ray Leonard when he did, that was a little bit too early. Let me tell you what happened. Roberto Duran fought the Goliath at 160 pounds. Right? Understand, Duran wasn't a middleweight. Duran gains weight to fight marvelous Marvin Hagler. Duran goes 15 rounds with marvelous Marvin Hagler. Right? So, of course, Thomas Hearns, who had destroyed Roberto Duran, decides he's going to fight marvelous Marvin Hagler. Folks, Hearns wasn't even a middleweight at the time. Right now, understand what happened. By this point, Tommy Hearns is a celebrity. He has an entourage. His trainer was livid the day of the fight. I'm talking about the great Emmanuel Stewart because Stewart encounters Thomas Hearns and Hearns is getting his legs massaged by members of his entourage. And that's exactly not what Stewart wanted. In other words, young fighters need to figure out, are you going to dedicate yourself to your craft or is being a celebrity really the objective here? Understand, Emmanuel Stewart knew that Hagler was a tough southpaw, knew that Hagler pivoted from righty to lefty to righty to lefty, knew that Hagler didn't like to dance or be on his back foot, understood that Hagler was going to be on a seek and destroy mission. It's Hagler who used to walk around with hats that said war on them that Derek Chisora has made popular for this generation. So, Emmanuel Stewart thought that his fighter, with that beautiful jab, was going to be using movement in that jab to stay away from Marvin Hagler. When he saw Hearns getting his legs massaged, that's the worst thing for a fighter. Because that tires out the muscles. He understood at that moment that Thomas Hearns was going to try to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Marvin Hagler, right? That's exactly what Thomas Hearns tried to do, right? Folks, in the 1980s, that was a huge mistake. Now, here, again, Mark Twain said history doesn't repeat itself, but sometimes it rhymes, right? That quote's attributed to him. Understand, you have a Goliath at 160, who happens to be a Southpaw. His name is Janabek. Right? Look, I'm not saying avoid Janabek. All I'm saying is you just beat Liam Williams. Let's get real here. Work up to the Sugar Ray Leonard type guys. Work up to the Janabek type guys. Right? I believe Canelo Shiraz is ready for him right now. Right, right now, understand, that jab doesn't line up as well with the southpaw, which is what Janabek is, right? After the fight, there's an interview. Frank Warren is in the ring, and Shiraz says, hey, I'm ready to fight anybody, right? Th that sounded like Thomas Hearns in the early 80s, right? My point is simply pick the sequencing. Right? 
you're world class. I have no doubt you're going to have a title. I have no doubt you're going to have longevity. Don't jump in the Janabek part of the pool right now. Maybe you'll be ready for Janabek in two, three fights. Right? But understand, Southpaw is different from righty. Right? Understand, you're going to have a lot of guys in there trying to figure out how to dodge your jab to get in to land body shots on you. Right? So, all I can say is the world is Hamza Shiraz's oyster. There are very few guys in the sport I see with a jab like this. Virgil Ortiz is the only other young fighter who comes to mind. Right? Let me just say, a jab like this is an endowment. There's a spectacular interview online here. Please look it up. It's a recent interview. It's Marcos Viejas. Let's give him a pub here. He does some great interviews. And he catches up with Lennox Lewis. Now understand, Lewis is interesting. Because Lewis comes across like a very cultured boxing ambassador. But understand, Lewis has an ego. Lewis firmly believed from the first day I saw him in his boxing career until the end that he was the best. Right? Lewis has an ego. Right? I have no doubt. Lewis has a story where he talks about being an amateur, cruising around, hearing about Mike Tyson. He and I think it was Frank Maloney traveled to Catskill, New York to spar with Mike Tyson, right? When Tyson is an amateur and Lewis is an amateur. And Lewis believes that he knew he could beat Tyson from that sparring session. Now, this is before Tyson rules the roost. This is before Lewis wins the 88 Olympics. Well, Lewis is talking to Marcos Viejos, and they talk about Canelo. Shiraz needs to look at this interview because Shiraz has a Lewis-level jab. And Lewis actually talks about how he would fight Canelo. He says, look, you know, I would use... <laughs> I think he talks about himself in the third person. He says, I would use a Lennox Lewis jab. He said, there's a way to beat Canelo. Basically, it involves using the jab and being patient. Right? That's the model I would follow if I'm Shiraz. Right? My attitude would be the Larry Holmes attitude. This fight doesn't start until this guy shows me he can get by my jab. It wouldn't be the Carlos Monzon attitude. Look at Monzon against uh, Nino Bienvenuti. Right? Where Monzon has a great jab. But if you got too close to Monzon... <laughs> Monzon was going to make this a street fight, right? If I'm Shiraz, I realize I don't have to do anything other than show this great jab and have the other things working behind it, like the uppercut, like the things he showed against Liam Williams in a dominant, scary performance, right? I'm not going to be the only one giving Shiraz advice I'm just telling you, you know the special athletes when people come out the woodwork to give advice, right? Shiraz, one of boxing's brightest stars, right? I think, I think he can do a lot of things. Let me just say this. You're at 160. We understand you're going to gain weight as you get older. 168, you're going to have to make sure you're ready for that, right? Without a mobile jab, you're going to be really dealing with a lot if you fight David Benavides, who chased down Caleb Plant, for example, a guy with great legs, mobility, right? Benavides is a master in the pocket, right? Just... Be aware, David Morrell is more mobile than David Benavides, right? You're going to end up at 168 eventually, right? 
175 is going to clear out a little bit after this unification between Baturbiev and Bevel, right? All I'm saying here is there's no rush. Get the paydays. Future paydays will be there, right? You don't have to hustle in the ring to fight a Janabek, a David Benavides, or a Demetrius Andre. Right? Andre's interesting because Andre is losing weight to get back to 160. That's going to be a struggle, folks. But just understand, he's the kind of guy who has spent his life beating jabs and understand he's a southpaw. Be wary of southpaws. Let me also say this too. Boxing is an unforgiving sport. You heard me mention Lennox Lewis. Of course, Lewis was knocked out by two different guys, right? You heard me mention Vladimir Klitschko. Vladimir Klitschko didn't pace himself, ran out of gas against Ross Purity, right? He later gets knocked out by Corey Sanders. He runs out of gas against Lehman Brewster, right? You would have thought by the Brewster fight, he would have learned his lesson, right? Having great tools, having great power, Having great talent in this sport isn't enough. You have to work. Larry Holmes, for all the brilliance, gets dropped by Ernie Shavers. Is lucky he was able to clear his head. Shaver is one of the most vicious punchers of the 70s. Of course, he ends up getting dropped by Ronaldo Snipes. Right? You're going to have to be mindful. You're going to have to figure things out. But don't, don't decide like Thomas Hearns did, and Hearns had your confidence, that you're going to fight a Ray Leonard too early. That you're going to fight, you're going to gain weight, fight Marvin Hagler, and decide that you're going to go toe-to-toe with him. Right? Use some common sense on the sequencing of your career. Right? I think the sky's the limit. This guy is one of the brightest lights in terms of promising careers I've seen in several years. Those are my thoughts. Let me hear yours. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this YouTube video. Let me just say this too, and I know it's going to sound bizarre. You know, it's a shame this fight didn't go a few rounds, right? The problem is you see the talent level and you're excited by it. I don't blame Liam Williams' corner at all. He's completely outclassed. (laughs) And, you know, you know, if I'm Liam Williams, I'm shaking the hand of the quarterback who waved the towel, right? I'm thinking, this guy saved me, right? But the bottom line is, you know, sadly, this fight didn't go long enough for the public to fully see all the skills you have, right? Just food for thought. Um, that's what happens when you have a lot of talent. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this YouTube video. Again, the film of the fight is in my favorites folder. Understand betting wise, the Shiraz by KO prop delivered and it took less than three minutes, right? You got a little bit under a minus 200 on that. Uh, nice, easy profit on this fight. Thanks for stopping by.